All right, so we'll work with the uh, WP Commerce a little bit more. Um, get our feet wet with a little e-commerce and then move over to WooCommerce as well. We'll look at a couple more things over at the settings. Remember we were still uh, looking at a few things regarding the store settings. Now that was two whole days ago. Remind me, where are the settings for your store? That's right, under the settings menu. And then store. Let's go look at store settings. Um, let's look at the last tab, presentation. Now, one of the things about any of these e-commerce plugins is that they often work best depending on the theme. So, remember in WordPress, basically we've got in WordPress we've got the um, theme plus plugin or plugins equals your site. So you can have one theme at a time and many plugins, as many plugins as you want. As you get more advanced, you're going to see that some plugins also ask you to install like child plugins or related plugins. Sometimes a theme or a plugin asks for extra plugins to be installed, and you should. So if the theme author or the plugin author, and it'll pop up at the top if it recommends you, if you're using this plugin, you might also want to use this other plugin. You should do it because that uh, plugin author, they know what they're talking about. It's their plugin, they are recommending for you to uh, make it better. In our case, um, from what we've got so far, uh, we don't have that. It doesn't say anywhere about um, uh, add these extra plugins or anything like that, so we're fine. But you often see that. Uh, depending on plugins. That relates to what we're going to talk about here under presentation as well. The, uh, the interface of your shopping cart is very much based on the theme. And there are many themes out there that exist. And there are many themes out there that are e-commerce optimized. So sometimes a theme that you have might not look that good when you're using e-commerce plugins, be it the one we're using right now, WP e-commerce, or when we look at WooCommerce. So oftentimes, the best e-commerce experience for your users is tied together uh, with the e-commerce plugin and an e-commerce focused theme. You may have a theme that looks very nice, but then when you add e-commerce features, it doesn't look as nice. And we will see that as we test this plugin. Uh, maybe the shopping cart doesn't look as nice as it could. Maybe uh, the buttons to add a product don't look obvious. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell you what is what could be the problem at this point until you start to beta test your site, and so, until you start to act like you're gonna buy a product, add it to the cart, you go through the whole process. So just keep that in mind that most likely eventually we will switch themes to a more e-commerce focused plugin or theme. So some of the things we can do now under presentation, I won't mention every single one of these. There's a lot of them, but they're pretty straightforward. If you have any uh, if you need any further help with any ones I don't cover, remember we've also got help on the top right corner. Under the um, little help tab at the top, you can get help for the theme and different screens of the plugin. Let me mention first this uh, box on the right uh, advanced theme settings. Uh, this plugin is made out of a variety of related files. And if we wanted to write any custom code, Remember our editor here. If we were to go to editor, it would only allow us to edit the code of the existing uh, theme. Uh, the things such as changing the, de the changing the behavior of the shopping cart, or changing the look of the products page via advanced code writing, 
we wouldn't be able to do it. We would not be able to do it until we say, move these pieces of the template into the main editor area. For most of us, we don't need this. We're not going to manually edit the code of these files. If we want to, we would need to select them and move them, and then they will be accessible under the editor screen. So I'll just write here optional and advanced. You need to move, let's see, how do they word it? Move template files. You need to move template files uh, from the original location to the appearance editor if you want to edit or create custom code. It's under Settings, and I've gone to the Presentation okay. tab. Mm -hmm. It doesn't quite sound like it would be there, but that's where that is. Yes? Uh, when you mentioned that you could purchase an e-commerce site that was more e-commerce friendly. Hmm. E-commerce theme. 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 Mm -hmm. So I searched themes under e-commerce, but nothing came up. How would you find out whether these ones are e-commerce friendly? We'll look at two places. But first of all, you're saying you went to appearance themes and you didn't find any of e-commerce here? Did I spell it wrong? E-commerce? There we go. We both spelled it wrong. Yeah. So, yeah. E-commerce. So uh, this is one of the places. Um, the other place I've mentioned before, I'll mention it again, uh, this great uh, other site, Theme Forest. Remember that place, themeforest.net. Here's another place where you may go to get themes that are more e-commerce focused than what we might have at this moment, themeforest.net. Uh, so just taking a quick look here, you see how their preview is designed in a way that it's focused more on products than perhaps the one we currently have installed. I haven't tested any of these, so I don't know how good they are. But again, as usual, the, the little thumbnail is going to make it look amazing. And then when you install it and activate it, it probably won't look the same until you go into Customize your theme. So that little thumbnail always looks great, but you have to then take some time to customize it, maybe set up widgets, maybe headers and menus, and then you'll say, well, how do I even know that? You want to read the documentation of the theme. Themes have a manual as well. Yes? Um, going to a website and getting plugins and themes, and they, they have you download it. How do you get that into your like, it depends. So here, for example, under Appearance, uh, if I wanted to uh, add a theme that I got from a third-party site, we would still go to Add New, but then at the very top now we get a new button, Upload Theme. So you'll just have to upload the zip file that it gives you a theme. Plugin, plugin is the same. If we look at plugins at the top, we have Add a New, and instead of going through the plugin marketplace, you have Upload. So you'll get them as a zip file. You don't want to unzip them. You want to upload them as zip files. So on that note here, if you get a theme or plugin off-site, so let's say themeforest.net, you can simply upload your theme or plugin to your site to use it. 
Yes, sir. Let's put that there. Do not unzip. Do not unzip files beforehand. Now, it, it does tell you on that screen as well right there. It says, uh, if you have a plugin in a zip format, you may install it. But I'll put it right there in the notes uh, to remind you not to. There's no spell check on this. Um, do not unzip files beforehand. Uh, when I was looking at your particular one, it did mention to clear your cache in a couple of places. This would be one of them, but uh, another one might be like on the server. When you log into your main uh, control panel in the server, there's probably a, some button there also to clear cache. So it just depends on, on what your particular theme is asking you. And we can look at it in detail in the next break. Under that setting right there, what does flush theme cache do? Well, most uh, servers remember things uh, that people might access frequently in a cache. So I've seen it many times where we're making changes to a client's website in the back end, and then we go visit the front end, and it didn't look like anything changed. Like, I swear that I changed that logo, and the logo's still there. Well, that's because the latest information has not been refreshed. So sometimes it helps to simply refresh your web browser, and that might get the latest version of things. Other times it might help here, which is also saying here, if you move things around, they're still in the memory perhaps, click flush theme cache, that might kind of refresh things internally to help um, the latest version. And it kind of varies between different websites, unfortunately. For this other client, there is a specific um, button in, in the dashboard of WordPress that says clear cache. It might be in different screens. Yeah. Mm, not really. I'll put it in my notes and we might look at it uh, in deeper little later. But WP Super Cache is supposed to be a plugin uh, to help speed up your site. I haven't used it very much uh, because I kind of rely on things in the old school way about having optimized images already and having only minimal things that I need on the site, like no superfluous plugins and themes. I think people sometimes try to go to some of these cache speed up plugins because I don't know why my site is so slow, because I don't know how to use my site. And um, it could be useful. Um, it's got good ratings. So what we're talking about here is there is a plugin. Say that again? Yeah, that's usually how it is. Uh, WP Super Cache, a very fast caching engine for WordPress that produces static HTML files. So in theory, this is supposed to speed up your site. It's got more than a million updates, or uh, uh, installations and updated recently compatible, very good stars. People that use it seem to be happy with it. But again, if your site is already properly constructed, you might just you might not need it because it's going to be an extra plugin using up memory it might defeat the purpose. But right away people say see something about oh speeds up my site I want it they might not need it. All right, so here's some things that we can do depending um, on this theme and various factors. Uh, some of them are pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, what kind of button do we want to have when when someone adds something to the cart, uh, add to cart or buy now? Uh, this is the one that you decide on how you want. Most people, I would say, want the add to cart. They want to add more than one thing at a time to their cart. If you've got yourself set up to quickly buy now, you can do that, depending on your products. Show product ratings, yes or no. So again, I'm not going to do every single one. If you've got a question on one, we can come back. But if I don't mention one, the default is fine. Show product ratings, yes or no. That again is completely optional. Do you want to show uh, when people give it a star rating of 1 to 5, yes or no? Completely optional. But this one reason why I might say to turn this on is 
using the wisdom of the crowd, uh, using other people's opinions and reviews and ratings to help you and convince other people to buy the product. So popularity breeds popularity, and unpopularity breeds unpopularity. If it doesn't look like people are buying products, if you've got like zero star ratings, it kind of dissuades people from putting their own opinion. But if, uh, if people see it's got five stars, it's got reviews, it's got comments, that convinces people a little more often to buy or also comment and review. So I'll leave it on just to see what it looks like. Do you want to show explicitly if the stock if there is stock of a product or not? And that depends on your product. Victor's Bakery, I can make cookies all day long, so I don't need to show how many we have in stock. But you that might have a, a one-off product or a couple that are uh, only uh, available until they sell out, you might want to show that you have product available or not. In this case, I would recommend to turn on yes, display fancy purchase notification. Uh, they click add to add to cart. A little pop-up appears that says, would you like to keep shopping or go to your cart? Without that, they don't get much of a feedback that they added it to their cart, and they click add again, and then they've added two items to the cart. I would say yes on that one. So per item shipping, that's fine. Display, disable link, don't worry about that. Add quantity field. OK, so add quantity field. Do you want people to be able to add more than one of an item? So uh, they're going to buy a birthday cake, and there will be a little um, toggle switch to add one or two or ten of the product. Um, you can put no, of course, to say you can only add one item at a time of that item. So whatever you feel works for your products. The default free WP e-commerce plugin has one default view for products. If you upgrade to the pro version, you get a lot of extra features and a couple features based on design. How would you like to display your products as a list or as a, gr as a grid? We're going to use the free one, so we'll keep it the default, which looks fine. But if you want a different design, you have to upgrade. Or you go over to Appearance Editor, and if you know the code, you can change design that way. If you have the grid, view. If you've upgraded to grid, then these items here you can set. Uh, but you don't, so don't worry about any of those. When we work with categories, we can have them as a list, which I, I don't like very much at all. I would instead put it in the menus, and we'll see menus in a little bit. Uh, don't worry about select what product. Okay, sort. How would you like your product sorted? The default in this case is time uploaded. So the most recently uploaded product will be the first one that shows up in the list of products. Uh, you can do drag and drop to organize them exactly how you want, or alphabetical. I kind of prefer alphabetical, so I'll put it alphabetical. You can change it if you want. A to Z, or Z to A. Breadcrumbs is a trail of where the user is at in your cart. So if we just look up some product on another store, we can see breadcrumbs over here. This shows we're in the section of toys and games. And as I go deeper into the hierarchy of products, the breadcrumbs, the, the menu, might show that. So I'm in toys, specifically arts and crafts, specifically drawing, and then I can say, show me all paintbrush items. Those are the breadcrumbs. They give you a path to go back when you've gone deeper into your product inventory. Now, that depends if you're going to use it or not. That depends on 
how detailed you are with your categories. Are you creating, um, are you creating categories with subcategories and such? So let's say I've got a category of cakes, and I'm selling, um, you know, sugar-free cakes and cakes that actually taste good. So you have different kinds of cakes in each one of those, and then you go into, okay, sugar-free cakes. And inside of cakes, I have uh, chocolate-style cakes, vanilla-style cakes, and then I go deeper into vanilla, and then I have, you know, uh, light vanilla or uh, full-flavored vanilla, whatever. I'm going deeper into the categories that I create of products. Do I want to show that to the user? And at the moment, I don't quite know how it looks like because it depends on the theme. Yes, exactly. Also, it would be more relevant to sites that are very detailed with a lot of products, categories, and subcategories. Let's see what else. These other ones, subcategories, all of these. Uh, these defaults are fine. Where would the shopping cart be located? It's, it's. Uh, we've got a brand new widget, a few new widgets to work with. Our shopping cart could be added to a widget in a sidebar or in the footer or in the header, depending on your particular theme. So just very briefly, you don't have to change screens. But if I was looking at the widgets, um, I've got some brand new widgets over here, WP e-commerce widgets. If I wanted to add um, you know, the shopping cart to the footer so that the, it's always visible, I've got a brand new widget that will do that. It will show in the footer. What's the widget? Sorry. Well, it's these mini apps that give you extra little features. At the moment, when people are looking at my blog, they will see a list of categories and custom HTML. If I wanted, I could then add, and I've also got just, I've got two calendars in the, in the footer for some reason. But uh, widgets are just like little apps that give you extra features. So if you look here, I've got two calendars down in the footer. I just put a couple examples there. But... Um, we've got here the cart actually we have both of them even though it doesn't quite look like it we have the widget but we've also got our shopping cart in its own page remember under pages we have already a um, a checkout a shopping cart page We have them both. Um, it's if I only want one or the other, one or the other. If I put it on page, then we won't have a widget, so it won't be in my widgets menu anymore. If we put it on widget, we have the widget, but we also have the page. Now, if we have set up Drop Shop, um, an extra plugin and such, then we have that ability to show the shopping cart, and also we have manual, so we would have a way to add our shopping cart via code. So the short answer, just keep it on, on widget because then it gives you the most options as a widget or as a page. Let's see, uh, product category. If, uh, when we create categories in a, in a moment, if we added a description to the category, we could display that yes or no. So that's optional. We can add thumbnails to categories. We'll see how in a moment, and we can show those thumbnails or not. We, yeah, exactly. We're past the shopping cart. Uh, we're in a new little section here, product category settings. So the shopping cart was this block right here. So this is just where you're, if you click on from the, the home page where it's like a matrix, a block of, you know, a picture of whatever, jewelry or a cookie. Then when you click, that goes to that product page, a particular product page, detail page. Exactly. If I choose to go, I've got possible products of cookies, cupcakes, and pies. So I go to the pies screen, that's where that description would show. 
Let's see, product count. Um, again, product count. Do you want to show how many of an item is inside of that category? Yes or no? So it's the category page. The category page, the category screen, yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to do these as a grid or not? So you can't quite visualize what these look like, but the good thing is you can turn these on, you can save it, and then you can visit site. Then you can decide if you like what they look like or not. Here's some simple um, spots right here to change the sizes of your products. Uh, so all of these are set to the same size for a product thumbnail. Uh, if you're looking at them in the categories or if you're looking at it as a single product. These are also going to be based on the, um, the theme. And if you've got images that are very large, Okay, here it says crop thumbnail, yes or no. No is going to shrink or stretch your picture to fit under these dimensions. And that might be very bad, because if I've got a product that has a picture that is horizontal, this is going to force it into a square. The width and the height are the same. So your picture will probably look weird. Well, if I put it on yes, what will happen is it will crop and remove the stuff past the boundaries we said here. That could be bad as well, because I might have a picture that isn't cropped the right way. So this is where you have to definitely set what are the sizes that I want to display my images as, and what are the sizes of the images I'm uploading. So I'm just going to add a few values here. Uh, the thumbnail, I'll leave it like that, but then the product category, I'm just going to put some, some sizes here. Notice these are horizontal. If you've got vertical pictures, will they be cropped? Will they be stretched? You, you have to decide. Do you even want to show thumbnails? The default is yes. Usually there's no reason to turn it off, but you could if you're doing something advanced. Yes? This is a part that honestly I wish it was a little better. You there you you can't you can do it mathematically. You know if you have s software like Photoshop where it can tell you the pixel dimensions and then resizing it and you know the exact values. It's a little bit of a trial and error. Uh, as, as long as you're in the right proportions, it shouldn't be distorted or cropped. So I would need to know what are the dimensions of my original picture and then figure out proportionally what would be a good width and height so that if, if it gets shrunk down, here it still looks good. It doesn't look distorted. So um, no, no easy way. It's just a little trial and error. On that note, um, videos, uh, if you're putting in videos, is there a place to find out what, how big they're going to be coming in on the site? No. Uh, videos are a different beast because uh, videos can be resized uh, depending on the screen a little easier. Mm -hmm. And um, it, if you're bringing in a video, if you're embedding a video from YouTube, for example, you have the option when you get your embed code on YouTube to actually shrink it to the size you want. So it's sort of a case-by-case -case basis with videos. Uh, for images, there's a global setting right here. Okay. Um, and later, can you go over that on YouTube? Sure. Yes. If you had, uh, if you brought in the images of your product, um, just you, we were talking that WordPress makes thumbnails and everything. Could you, if you went and set those uh, width and heights to the settings that uh, WordPress uses for thumbnails, mm -hmm. would WordPress be smart, smart enough to basically, um, when you select an image to give you the thumbnail version for that? Or? So based on the, these dimensions here and then based on the different versions that WordPress creates? Right. If you, if you look at WordPress thumb, or you configure WordPress thumbnails, be the same width and height, would WordPress 
automatically substitute the thumbnails for those versions, or should you? In other words, do you have to make two separate uh, versions of the same image, one for thumbnails and one for um, regular full size? Um, that sounds like two questions to me. I'll, I'll answer them both. On your second part, you don't need to worry about making different sizes of thumbnails or, or images because WordPress will do it for us. And even if we try to upload a version of one size and a version of another size, I don't think WordPress is smart enough to keep track of which one is the right one for the right place. Because WordPress can be very auto automatic in some places. It, it will see you've got two images. You, they cannot be named the same thing because it will, it, will, it will automatically, even if you try to upload two things with the same name, it'll just append the number one or something. So it'll see two different images and it's not smart enough to know that, well, this is the thumbnail version of that one. Even if you name this one cat and name this one cat thumbnail, it doesn't know that they're linked. So you're sort of, it's, it's a waste to try to create, to upload different versions of your image. Just upload a good sized image, as we said before, you know, maximum size 19, 20. Just upload a good size image of it and let WordPress handle the resizing of it all. And then uh, decide yourself here what are your sizes of your, of your particular um, thumbnails you want. And then I'll come back to that, fully answer it one more thing when we talk about a plugin called Regenerate Thumbnails. Because what happens is WordPress might create different versions of your graphics and eventually maybe lose track of a few and they're just taking up space on your server, there's a plugin that helps you kind of clean that up. It's called Regenerate Thumbnails. We'll cover it a little later. So basically, it'll just decide what thumbnails to use for the product size. The right size based on what you've done here. But yeah, internally behind the scenes, it will decide which is the best actual file. Yeah. So if I'm uploading a portfolio of photographs, it will know Whenever you place an image anywhere in a screen of your site, WordPress might use an existing size or create a new size depending on the screen. So this is again the automated aspect of it that you just upload your image, it will create the different sizes as it sees necessary for people on a big screen, on a mobile device screen, on, on a thumbnail size, on the full size. That's why I say I recommend uploading it at a size of 1920 on the maximum width or height so that then it has enough size to shrink it to the different sizes it might be shown as. Let's see here. You have to upload uh, because it's going to be a picture attached to a product. It's the same as managing media. If you were to add a picture to a product, it will put it anyway in the media folder. And if you upload a variety of uh, items as a gallery to the media, it will be accessible when you create products. They're all centralized under media. This particular, just one thing, this particular uh, uh, option right here, I, I recommend doing color box instead of thick box. Uh, just design-wise, when you click on a thumbnail, a small thumbnail, it'll show you the larger version. Do you want it to show it in the style of thick box or color box? And just in my experience, I like the design of color box a little better. It shows you the, the picture hovering on your screen a little nicer than thick box. Thick box is a little simpler, so you can choose whichever one you like, but I kind of like color box a little more. Question? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm kind of just struggling with it. I upload the picture into my media section, I've got a nice portfolio mm -hmm. gallery. Then I go in here. And it already exists on the site, so when I go into the products, I'm just listing the name of the product to populate the actual store page. Yes. Up again. I'm just simply referencing the product in that. Yes, and uh, we will do that in just a moment, so it'll make even more sense. But yes, uh, it already exists in your site, so when we add a new product in a moment, yeah, we just reference that uh, picture that already exists. 
connected to that picture, and then we add the other things like price and such, and it's uh, connected. Let's see, lastly, couple, okay, pagination. Uh, doing yes will say show three products per screen until it says next page, previous page, page two of seven, or whatever. If you put no pagination, then all your products will just appear in one long list, which may not be bad it's just depending on your design and such so whatever you want to do here I'm gonna go with pagination yes if I've got three products on the fourth or more then it goes to page two you know on the seventh product you have three pages and do you want to display go to page one page two only at the bottom only at the top or both whatever you'd like I like both so that I don't have to scroll all the way back down to go to next I, I know that I want to go to next right away at the top of the screen Comments. Um, WordPress has some built-in abilities for people to comment on your site and your products. There's another thing that I've never used. I've taught this class for years and I've never really looked into it. One of these days I will. There's something called Intense Debate. And it is some sort of plugin that allows people to be even, to write even more comments or moderate comments. I don't know what it is. I've never looked at it. But uh, it's off and if you turn it on you have to go in and set yourself up and put your ID and all of that and there'll be some sort of more advanced commenting system. Let's click yes on that screen. Remember to click yes or uh, click save when you make any changes. So we've looked at all of the settings over here, right? We're ready to move on with products. Nope, we are forgetting on purpose the two most annoying things, taxes and shipping. <laughs> Let's go look at taxes. This is the part where definitely I cannot give you any advice. You, depending how you're running your business, will set this up. And if you don't know how or what settings to put here, this is when you contact a professional. And I'm not qualified. I'm not, not being glib. I'm not qualified to give you the right advice here. I can sort of ex sort of explain the screen and such, but I cannot tell you what to do here. So first of all, turn tax on. It's off. None of your products will be taxed. If that's what you want, then that's it. You don't have to do anything here. If you are going to tax products, just to explore what this looks like, I'm going to turn on tax, and then I'm going to click Save. And we get a few more options. So obviously we can turn this on or off whenever we want. But the idea is, okay, product prices. Product prices are tax exclusive or product prices are tax inclusive. So that's saying, if I add cookies for $5, tax exclusive means $5 plus tax. And we'll set up the plus tax in a moment. If we have tax inclusive, those cookies that we added, $5, already include the tax. So there will not be any extra taxation on it. We've already figured it out somehow. Usually, again, no advice, but usually that's the one you want. $5 plus tax. There it is. Product-specific tax. Um, this one here, add per product tax to tax percentage if product has a specific tax rate. You can get even more detail that certain products have more tax or less tax and all of that. Uh, that's the first one. The second one is just, uh, in general, use one tax rate. And again, this is a complication because when we deal with taxes, it's easy here in the physical world because you walk into a store, you're at a location that has a certain sort of sales tax, it gets charged, you're done. It gets tricky online when you're trying to sell throughout the U.S. because every state has its own tax rate, uh, sales tax. And even in the real world, driving one street to the next and you go into a different uh, city or state or county or, or whatever, they might have different taxes as well. Uh, for example, in the Chula Vista area, uh, tax there is like 8.25, and you go to National City one street away and it's like 9.1 or something. No, yeah, so uh, even in this county, you can go from one town to another and it's going to be a different tax, uh, sales tax. So, again, this is the complication of I, I can't give you an answer how to do this. 
you need to check with a professional. The tax logic. Yeah. I believe there are. I don't have any off the top of my head to recommend. We'd have to do some searching and, re and get reviews and such. Uh, but that's why perhaps people don't tax anything there and then make it up during tax time or do quarterly payments and such to cover that. <laughs> the logic, okay, how are we applying taxes to things? The default here, apply tax when billing region is the same as the tax rate. Well, before I answer this section, let's look here. Tax rates. Market. All markets. So anywhere in the world that people are, that I'm selling products to that I've set over on my general settings. Remember under general settings I said I'm shipping or selling to uh, US, Canada, Mexico. So I'm saying in all of the markets that I sell to, it will be 8% tax on that. Um, well, that might be too much for some jurisdictions and too little for others. Okay, so instead of all markets, you can pick for Argentina, they will have a 2%, and then add. For then Austria, or Azerbaijan, they will have a 3%, and so forth. And yeah, it's a lot of setup here. There's probably a plugin that will work properly for all of the regions. And even if you just use US, so I'm going to take that back, even if you just use USA, then there it has the ability to be set by one of the 50 other states and territories of the US. So if I go here, then I've got, okay, all US states. I'm only shipping to the US. So here's what I'm going to choose, all markets. And then I've got for all of these, New Hampshire, Texas, Utah, California, Wyoming, DC, etc. It doesn't go down as deep as, um, like I've said, of cities. It's just state. So this is, this can be complex. So having, yeah. Just out of curiosity, let's say you get place, you know, uh, a tax rate for California, mm -hmm. and you left it, you know, at no tax. Um, and a, a shopper buys that item, mm -hmm. pays the tax. It all depends, first of all, do you have turn tax on or off? So if you have turn tax on and you're saying you didn't put something for California? Well, you didn't have it on and uh, you had a shopper on, on your website and they purchased the item, but you had to set that, set that up. If there is no value under tax rate, there will be no tax added. So no one, no one's, no one's going to get charged that tax. If it makes sense for the question being asked. You. And and they'll charge you for it, yes. So yeah, and not an easy answer, but what what's that? We're more than happy to do those calculations. Of course. As a, as a practical matter, five second version, sales tax is paid once by the ultimate consumer. Since you're the, you're you're selling to the ultimate consumer, you're required to collect and pay that tax. So so if you don't collect that tax, they want to come out for you, right? So if you say it's price inclusive, what you would do is you add up all your sales and just compute the tax and just pay. Okay, so that, that's the simple way to do that. So obviously everyone will check their own situation, but as your advice, say that again. <laughs> no, the last thing that you said. Is that, yeah, sales tax is yes. paid on sale to the ultimate consumer. The yes. seller is responsible for collecting and paying over that tax. 
to the jurisdiction of mm. California. Mm. If you don't collect it, we're still responsible to pay. So the simplest way to do it would be to have tax inclusive pricing. Mm -hmm. And then you have to check. I don't I don't do sales tax, but I, however often sales taxes are required to be paid, you would take your total sales and compute the sales tax based on that rate and, and just pay the sales tax. It just comes out of your side. So put it on tax inclusive, add up all your total sales and then what? Apply this the tax rate. And I will apply it based on your address, where you're selling from. And most of that stuff now is online, so you go in and you plug in your taxes and your location, and it will compute your, your sales, excuse me, and your location, and it will calculate for you. Uh, and those are, those are doing their monthly report. <laughs> okay. Or talk to your CPA. So yes, it could be tricky. So you could look at that. Or the final thing, talk to your CPA. So it is a little bit of a setup. Yes. I saw it in WordPress, and also it's all open and into about all the uh, privacy things going on with um, Europe right yeah. now. But if you store an account and all that, you got to basically pay attention to that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I believe tomorrow, tomorrow's the big deadline for that, the 25th, I believe. Uh, so, yep, that's a whole other can of worms. Uh, I need to educate myself a little bit more to say something about that in class. But yes, Europe is has, has uh, decided that privacy matters and so um, a lot of global companies are scrambling to deal with data retention issues about how long do they store your data on their server and I've seen several examples of companies that are saying well that's it for us we're done our, we're setting, shutting down our service uh, a few like of the small social networks and such so for us here it's a good thing that I've got it set that my markets are going to only be Canada, US, and Mexico. But if I was selling to countries in the European Union, then that is something that I need to educate myself on, pay attention to, and adhere to, because I could be liable. But that's sort of like, does that apply to us little people? Yes, but are we going to be liable for it? Maybe, are they going to, you know, low-hanging fruit, etc. Then they come after you. Yeah. Usually those big sweeping things are for the big companies that, oh, Target is not being compliant, Walmart is not being compliant, not Victor's Bakery. Well, like Google doesn't have the right to hold it forever now. In, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on this, okay, last thing. Uh, let's see what the tax bans do again. Okay, the, the tax bans are a way to apply. Okay, so tax rates are happening to all your products at once. If I'm saying for anywhere that I sell in the U.S., I'll put 8%. Sure, just to put some values here. And then also maybe Mexico, just to put something here. Let's say I've got things that, I, that I'm charging and um, for all my products. Tax bans are a way for me to attach uh, certain tax rules to certain products. So individually or in groups, I can band them together. A particular group of products have a particular taxation for some reason. Uh, so. That's another advanced thing to do there. I'm not going to. I'm just doing something like this. Oh, we can have the provinces of Canada, too. So um, yep. this whole tax screen could be complex. We looked at it in general. You need to talk to your tax professional. Um, that's the big idea there. Were you able to add uh, Mexico and Canada? 
When you click on the right side over here, plus, we can add a new market. Oh, really? Hmm. Mm, okay. Well, we can make more bands to deal with that and then deal with that. Well, just to, I guess, get it halfway, but the second five seconds on the sales tax is that if you're selling physical products, okay, you, when you purchase your, your materials, you get a, a reseller certificate, so you're not paying that sales tax when you purchase your materials. Mm -hmm. If you're paying sales tax, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so the other way you could do this is to just don't bother with the sale, with, with, with the reseller certificate, pay the sales tax on purchase, and then you've got it included in the cost of your price, and you know your price and getting the profit correctly. And on audit, they're going to say that's not the right way, I'm going to say, who cares because you've got it. Seems, uh pretty detailed. No, reseller says says to the purchaser to the person you're purchasing products from right. that I am not the ultimate consumer, I'm gonna resell it so I don't have to pay the tax. I have to collect so it. That's, from a different, uh, that's a reseller certificate you would get from the Board of Equalization for California. Which is different from the one that used to say that you're gonna be paid. Absolutely. Yeah. This is just, this. What this is doing is you give it to your to your vendor, and it's their proof that they didn't have to collect the tax from you. So they're two different. Yeah. Well, they've got a certificate. One is, one's a reseller certificate that says I'm not the only consumer. And the other one. And the other one is just a certificate. I'll talk to you. Okay. Did you, did you bring? Sense? Did you bring? No, but did you bring business cards? <laughs> yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. So uh, I, mean, I just don't want to see somebody come kind of go with that half piece of, of this. Yeah, but I don't think, but I don't think anyone here is going to jump in and and set this in in just what we've talked about today in, in the ten minutes we've talked about it. People should check in on their. Um, let's look over at shipping. Another fun thing to look at. So shipping. This one's also got enable it or not. This one might be slightly easier, uh, especially if you're sent, if you're selling physical products or not. If I'm selling virtual products, then this doesn't matter at all. I'm selling an MP3. You don't ship that. You gets downloaded. But if I'm selling Victor's Bakery, a dozen cookies, all of that in a box that I do have to ship out and weigh and all of that, okay, that's when this comes in. And this is similar also in that there's a lot of little things to turn on, and I cannot give you the advice about what to turn on here, but just to play with it, if I turn on enable the shipping method, okay, well, what's my shipping origin, city, I'll put San Diego, let's say, what's my zip code, 919, I don't know, 99921. If I have... Shipwire, which is a non-free service where I have a, where I have my stuff stored in warehouses, I can turn that on. Are we doing free shipping or not? We can turn that on, yes or no. If you turn it on, it says okay. The only way it's set up here, there's different kinds of free shipping in other e-commerce sites, but in this one, it's only really based on how much you've spent. If uh, you spend more than a hundred dollars, okay, then shipping is free. More than twenty dollars, shipping is free. Whatever, that's completely optional. I'll just put something, $55 and 55 cents, then it's free. <laughs> modules, and then shipping calculators. Okay, so modules. We've got the flat rate, uh, table rate, weight rate. Which way are we gonna charge people? On a flat rate, if you open up settings for that one, you see, okay, within the continental US, it's going to be $3 always, flat rate. And then outside, it will be $5. If I want to do international, well, everywhere in North America, a certain value, and South America, another value. So you can set all of these up, and you have to set some values and turn them on. Then the person, when they're going to buy a product, it'll have, it'll, they'll be able to select. I want to get this via flat rate. I want this 
uh, as table rate. Well, actually, uh, no, not yet. Uh, this is they choose over here. Actually, if you choose how they're going to get shipped, if you turn these on, they will have the option to uh, get the product shipped to them USPS, so the post office, UPS, the company, or Australia Post. And there are, if you go over to the um, pro version of the plugin, there are more options. Uh, let's say, what does the table rate look like? This one is, you can put a variety of sort of ranges of price. If what I'm selling, if it's at least $3 that I'm selling, it's just $1 shipping. If it's more than $10 I'm selling, it's $5, you know, that sort of thing. And then weight, well, that's the same sort of idea, but now based on weight, pounds. If you're doing grams and such, um, you, you have to first have grams set up in the general area of the store, and then you can do grams, um, metric that is. So. How come it's allowing both that you can actually check flat rate and you can turn them on and then per product you then specify this product is going to be a flat rate oh it would ask you if they're yeah. both checked yeah okay. if they're both checked you can you could in, in theory uh, apply the same thing to both products but yes that's a big conflict people will obviously choose a flat rate of two dollars if right. it's going to be cheapest to them but you would uh, it would ask you you would apply which one you want to which product I'm just gonna. What's the table rate? Comes the different shipping options. No, this is still related to um, yes, uh, how much it's being charged by of shipping. The, all all three of these are how much are they're gonna get charged for shipping, uh, but the table rate is based on a range of price. Uh, my I've got this much in my cart. It's gonna cost that much. Just to see what it looks like, I'm gonna turn on flat rate and just put some values here just to see what they look like. You want to update. As for the calculators, let's say I open up the USPS. Well, here you need a you need a whole bunch of setup. If you um, go off and create an account at the post office, you put your name here. You set these things up. I'm going to allow people to um, buy uh, or to ship their. Uh, their goods out, uh, they can choose first class, priority, whatever. So just to see what it looks like, I'm only going to add a simple flat rate. Fill in some of that, and then you click Save at the bottom. All right, so that's all of the settings. And when we look at WooCommerce, it'll be very similar. It'll ask for taxes and shipping, some basic store settings. It'll be very similar to what we've looked at already with some variations. Uh, we'll take our first break. When we come back, we'll make a few products to see what that looks like. Uh, we'll talk about uh, categories of products. Uh, coupons and variations and we'll keep going so it's uh, 715 we'll take a break until 725 and then we'll go on